Yes, so it's a lot later in the day, not what I originally planned, but let's work with what we have. It's the Purim break here in Israel. Our youngest is in a trip away from home, and Uri, the 16-year-old, is spending most of the days in, in the scouts, and so you might hear him going in and out. Yeah, anyways, I wanted to come here and catch up with you on a few things. I started the day and took you along with me. I started the day as I usually start Sundays. You know, Sunday is the first day of the week for us, so it's after the weekend. I usually spend um, more time on tidying up in the morning, and this morning I took care of our kefir and took you along with me, and I hope you enjoyed. I prepared some grains to give away tomorrow to one of the Monday's knitters. She was asking for it, so I discard uh, part of the grains to give to her tomorrow so she can start her own uh, kefir adventure. Yeah, so on this part of the vlog, I will catch up with uh, some crochet and knitting, FOs, finished finished objects and a new work in progress, which I'm very excited to tell you about. And last week, Eyal and myself, we celebrated the 24th anniversary and we had a lovely day off together. We drove to Jerusalem to visit the new National Library, which is a new, a beautiful uh, building that just they just finished um, working on and we wanted to go and visit there. So I, on the, la on the next part, on the last part of this vloggy episode, I will take you along with me to the visit in Jerusalem in the National Library. And I will also take you along with me to a nice wintry uh, barefoot beach walk uh, that we enjoyed last weekend, not this one, not yesterday, but the one before. So yeah, this is going to be uh, edit for you at the end of this vlog, vloggy kind of episode. Uh, so yeah, I think we can start, we can start with, I have two, two finished objects to share, and the first one is my, my Mondim socks. I finished my Mondim socks I think a week, uh, about a week ago. I, I, I think I, I finished them about a day or two after I uploaded my last episode. I just wanted to share with you what I have left from the yarn in case you also want to make it. So I have these two left. Let's see if the camera can pick it up. So each one of these balls is about 20 grams and the full ball was 100 grams uh, and yeah the socks came just as I imagined them and I really really enjoyed them I blocked them and immediately when they were dry I started to wear them and I really really enjoy them it's the first pair that I have which is um, a non superwash woolly socks and I really really enjoy it so if you consider making yourself a non superwash um, sock yeah the only thing I wanted to mention is that um, I soaked them in water and I, as I was blocking them I saw that the color is getting a little bit pinky so I think the the dark color got bleached into uh, the light gray color light gray color so it's not it's not too visible but it, it's there it is a slight change in in the colorway so just note uh, note to self um, yeah, this was the first finished object. I, I shared all the details, the stitches, I, how many stitches I cast on and the needles on the last episode, so you can go and check it out. Next finished object that I wanted to share with you today are these two crochet coasters. And I crocheted these 
as I was writing the pattern, I shared a free full step-by-step -step pattern over on my blog on last Friday. I called it the Light Heather Crochet Coasters. So if you are a blog subscriber, you already have it in your inbox. If not, you can go and visit crochetobjet.com. It is um, the last post that I shared last Friday. But in case you see this episode in the future, you can find it under the free pattern section. I think it's on the right hand sidebar under the free pattern section. I will link it down below in the description box for you in any case. But this is the light header coasters. I crocheted these two as I um, wrote the pattern ju just to check myself. But I made them uh, to gift as a gift. I think it's a perfect gift. And these are on the only the two first two that I crochet as a gift. We are, you know, Passover here. Pesach is just around the corner. So I think it's going to make a perfect gift for Passover, maybe for my aunts, my family, and for friends. Um, and in these, I used a different, a little bit different colorway, as you can see, uh, of the tweed. I, I... In these ones, I held the same yarns, like two threads of the plateau loopy, as I shared on my previous episode. You can go and check it out, but you can also get all the information you need on the blog. But this time, with the two thread, thre two strands of plateau loopy, I hold. I held also one strand of this color from the pure gint uh, tweed so let's see i have it already here in my making journal but this color is 1035 i hope you could uh, see it i hope the camera got uh, to focus on it anyway it's a little it's slightly different than the original color these are the first ones that i made and they are here already in use um, and yeah and in the pattern i uh, wrote the pattern so i think you can easily see right at the beginning that you can choose whatever size you like to make them like if you want to make like mug coasters as i made for myself and for maya our our uh, daughter you can you know stop crocheting in the round a, a lot earlier and then whenever you think you have reached the right size that you like you can skip right into the border making and for the border making i uh, created a specific video tutorial to show how I crochet the puff stitch exactly as I crocheted it here on my original light heather coasters. This is how I call them, uh, you know, after the name of the Pletolopi yarn, light heather coasters. Uh, and yeah, I think I strongly recommend that you will use any yarn you have in stash. I think personally think that I personally we use them for to place a hot pot on top of them so we wanted to them to be thick but you can play with different yarns combinations that you of yarns that you have in stash all the yarn together in a few strands and you know play around and see what kind of fabric you achieve the thickness if you like the thickness of the fabric if it's enough for you but it's a very simple and basic crochet pattern and it's a beginner friendly pattern actually. So I hope you will enjoy. It's over on my blog. I will link it down below in the description box for you. And yeah, and you have a video tutorial included. I think this is everything I wanted to share regarding uh, these two light header coasters. Yeah, this is the second finished object I wanted to share with you today. 
And last thing that I wanted to catch up is to share a new work in progress that I just started to knit on the previous weekend, not, not yesterday, on the previous one. Uh, it lives here in this basket and you might recognize it from previous episodes. I shared it for, with you. I shared the yarn that I ordered especially for this knit. So I finally started to kind of like test knit. It's not really a test knit, it's more like a preview knit for Laura Pinrose. The name of the designer is Laura Pinrose and um, she will come up with um, the Stella quilt blanket pattern. It's not uh, really a test because it will be based on her Stella quilt cushion pattern. So, um, so it's like a preview knit and I started, finally started to work on it. I really, really love it and I want to share it with you today. So let me take it out and I will tell you in a minute what yarn I decided to use and yeah. So I am almost done with my, my first motif. You work by with motifs and for Laura she mentioned that it will be okay for her if all the testers will only need one motif. I really hope I will go on a blanket adventure, but I have to say it's, it's quite, you know, a labor of love. It takes time and it's yet again another long-term blanket project. But here I am with uh, almost um, complete motif and this is um, the motif I choose to knit for the test. And, and yeah, let me share the yarn that I um, decided to use because I don't know if you remember, but I shared how I got confused with choosing what yarn I will use and what colors I will use and I got deep down into a rabbit hole with it. I made a Pinterest board where I, you know, collected some inspiration for colorways and also for the motif because in the pattern you can choose what motif you want and what the layout of, you can choose different motifs and you can choose different layouts. So I felt I need some inspiration and um, yeah, so but eventually I decided to go with um, a combination of two yarns for uh, the background, for the main color. So let me show it to you. I have my warm cup of tea. Um, yeah, it's a cinnamon tea. Um, yeah, for the main color, you see it's the main color and the contrast color. And I don't know if you can see it, but also in the contrast color, I decided to play with it a little bit. So I chose different shades for the pointy parts, triangles of the star and different one for the center of the star. So for the main color, I decided to go with a combination of these two yarns, these two colors of the same yarn. Ah, no, 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 it almost went into my cup of tea. So this is the combination that I chose to go with for the, for the main color. So it's two shades of this Aweta by Filcolana, which I shared many times before here in my podcast. It's an 80% superwash merino plus 20% nylon. The whole project is knitted, held two fingering yarns held together. So you achieve a DK weight wool by holding two fingering um, weight yarns. And I decided to go with the sock wool, so superwash 25, 80% and 20, or 75 and 8 and 25%, sorry. Um, so this, these colors are for the background. Um, the dark one is 978. The light one is 977. 
I really, really wanted to recreate the main, color, the main color. So not to use a color, given color, but to recreate my own uh, like combination of color. And you can see it creates a lovely, lovely like melange, or I don't know how you can describe it, but you can see them marling together, these two colors, and I really like this effect. So it's, it's a gray, but it's more like on the natural um, side of the color. And I decided to go, <clears throat> sorry, with these two because it will be much easier for me in terms of like to order yarn and to, you know, and to not to be worried about continuity if I get uh, hand dyed wool and it's not the same so I thought it will be I, I will be set for the background I have to say we have a lovely Instagram group where all the testers and can chat with Laura and it is a very supportive like community and I had um, like made a decision you know together with discussing it with the other testers. And this is like to go, for me, it's like to stay on the safe side in terms of like uh, ordering and you know, in the, during the difficult days here in Israel, shipping is not the same and I don't know, and sometimes when you want a hand dyed yarn, it's not ready to be shipped. And so I decided to went with these two. Sorry if I rumble too much on the same uh, subject. For the contrast color, I also went with two fingering yarns. Uh, as I said, this is uh, how I knit my blanket. I made a lot of thinking before if I want to use DK or if I want to use a different fingering weight held together. So for the contrast color, I used these two I used for this motif. And for the center part, for the center triangles, I use one of the colors, this one, held double. So I take the yarn, I pull the yarn from outside and from inside and work it together. These, I think I already shared them with you. This is a Madeleine Tosh um, sock. I'm not sure how they, uh, they call it. Madeleine Tosh, Madeleine Tosh Color Void from Twist Light. Color Void from Twist Light, it's 25% and 75. And the darker one is Living the Long Grass, it's Color Night, and once again, it's 75 Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. So these are the contrast colors that I use for my first motif. I'm not sure how I will continue. I do have a general idea, like a general vision of how will it look, but it is not yet finalized in my head because I'm not sure if I will stay on the gray, dark, um, dark gray, charcoal, black, combination story or I will might find myself adding uh, another color so another shade I don't know I don't know I will I will for sure keep you posted this is why I'm here but look this is gorgeous I am so in love yeah this Stella quilt um, blanket and I'm using uh, the same needles, uh, the same kind of needles that I use for my uh, coziest memory blanket. I don't know how I managed to do it because this company ran out of, they closed the business, and but I managed to order a pair of uh, single pointed needles in a size 3.75 millimeter. Uh, it's the seven inch length. I ordered the bell tip. Let's see, let's see how I can do it. And the stiletto 
the stiletto tip, which is the sharp tip. Uh, I have to say, it's not uh, the perfect length of the needle for this work, for this project, uh, or for this size of square that I uh, need, but I want to, to use them. I prefer to use them. I might change my mind and maybe change to a cable needle, long cable, long circular needles, but um, sorry, I have to yeah, uh, make my phone quiet. Um, I might might find it, I don't know. Now, for me, it's uh, this is what I want to work with. I really, really love them and enjoy them. And I'm very happy I could manage, you know, uh, order them from, it was really in the last minute. Now, I think they are not available anymore, but you can, you know, you can, maybe you can try. What else I wanted to say about it? You work, this project is mainly made out of garter stitch, but it's garter stitch with short rows. So if you are not familiar with German short rows, after this project, you will be knitting German short rows as you sleep. So, and you also have different methods on how to attach the next square. So you go, uh, as you go, you, uh, you join them as you go, you, you knit them and attach them as you go, and you have a few different methods. And she, expla Laura Penrose, explains it really, really uh, well on the pattern. I had some struggles, I had some issues, but it's me, and I, um, I, I made it. Uh, eventually, I, I ripped back a few times on one of the methods, and then eventually I was, you know, uh, able to make it, and now it's, it's in my head already. You have to work, st you have to be stick to the, pa the pattern, at least for the first motif, I guess I will be. With going with the, with the pattern, so it's not like um, mindless knitting that you can, you know, take away and just have a vanilla knitting. It's a little bit more complicated, but I guess once you get the idea, you you will be able to do it. Uh, I will be able to do it, you know, after a few times I knit each of the methods of the joining. Yeah, too too much talking about one thing, but. I'm sorry for that. Uh, yeah, so this is what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, and yeah, now I will leave you to, or you can join me to visit the national, uh, new national library, the new beautiful building and the garden where you can see some letters sculptured and the beautiful jacquard fabric they, they chose and then you can also join me to a nice beach walk, barefoot beach walk. I hope you will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you soon on the next one. Until then, happy making everyone. Bye.
Thank mm-hmm. you.